Hey everybody, Nick Bakes plays here, and today I'm going over Banal Tree, an alternate win condition that is taking the meta by storm. I believe it's currently rank 1 on rank ladder, and it's just been amazing. It's a really unique play style that everyone has to be ready for, and it's been getting crazy success. So here's the alternate win condition deck of Banal Tree. So first we'll go over Banal Tree just so you guys know like what that's really about. So we have Banal Tree, 5 mana landmark, round start, create a follower from a new region in hand. Win the game if you summon units from 10 different regions. So a new region in hand means if you haven't already summoned it. So if I've summoned a Bilgewater unit, then I can't get Bilgewater anymore. I only will get units I haven't summoned. The way Zek wins is through the battle tree. You have so much units. You can keep like units after units after units. You can either kill them just by swarming units and you know attacking and finish them up. Or if they can't get through all the units, you have the battle tree win con. Um, you have, again, all the units that have swing blockers. So with all the blockers, you can just block, 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 and keep playing the battle tree and you win the game. This is uh, the main card of the deck. The other main card of the deck is Bandal City Mayor. Your multi-region units cost one less. Play Manifest a multi-region follower. So pretty much everything in this deck is a multi-region follower, and they're all discounted by Mayor. So on turn three, you play the Bandal City Mayor, and you just swarm your whole hand. Everything costs one less, and allows you to either block infinitely to win with Bandal Tree, or do crazy damage output by playing all your units and just finish them off before the Bandal Tree even comes into play. So we have Group Shot, which is cheap removal. Protoporo is just Freyord rep. He's a multi-region Freyor unit. Timo's multi-region PNZ unit. Bando Commando is an amazing card. It's 2 mana, 1, 2, Elusive Vector Strike. Create a Hungry Alcat in hand. This is your Ionia unit. You get through Bando Commando. Uh, multi-region Ionia. We have Bomber Twins, your Sharima uh, rep. Yeah, this card, this card is absolutely amazing. This is Targon multi-region. So this card can actually get itself. The card can get Loping Telescope into Loping Telescope. When you play it, it manifests a Celestial cost 3 or less, an Epic, and a multi region Follower, again, can be itself. So you can go Loping Telescope, Loping Telescope, something else. But the Celestials are just good in general. A Crescent Strike to help uh, slow your opponent down. The Epics are insane. You can get like Buried in Ice and Stop Scion. You can get Feel the Rush and just went through that. So this card gives you tons of alternate win conditions. Uh, Rye Warden, pretty good. Just builds water, gives you another random one cost Follower. Can help get your regions filled up. Uh, Pokey Stick, deal with anything, draw one, just generically good. This is your Noxus card. We got the Mayor, of course. Tristana, I'll admit, I only put Tristana in because uh, I needed a YouTube video with every champion, or I wanted to make a YouTube video with every champion. And if there were a Tristana deck, this is probably her best deck. Um, very optional, though, you don't need her. But she gets plus one, plus zero for each multi region ally you summon this game. And there's obviously a ton of multi region allies in this deck. And when you summon a multi region ally, when you start in the field, she gives it plus one, plus zero. And then when she's leveled, she also gives an impact, which can chip away damage. Uh, Buster Shot is a way to deal with enemies, Poppies, Dravens, Ezreal, stuff like that. Um, it costs two less if you've played four plus different regions, which is very easy in this deck. Uh, Tender of Terror, Shadow Isle, Swarms, and Impact can chip. Uh, and Mini Morph. The reason you play three Mini Morph is it's make or break. If you only run two, you actually won't see it when you need it a lot of time. The only way, or one of the main ways this deck loses, is to Science Overwhelm, like a level Ezreal, or a level Vigar. The thing is, you can just block everything. This deck can just block, block, block. You have infinite units. Loving Telescope gives you more units. You can just keep playing things and blocking. So normal combat strategies are very hard to get through. So you usually just lose to things that are hard to deal with. Again, like the Vigar, level Ezreal, Science Overwhelm, and you just mini morph those and you win. Uh, a lot of times it comes down to having mini morph, and if you have it, you just win. If you don't, might be a bit harder. So yeah, you run three because you really want to see this. It's key to staying alive uh, against a lot of strategies in the meta. So the main thing that makes this deck so good is that it's way easier than it looks. At first, like 10 different regions, like, you know, how, how often are you going to do that? There are games where I, I draw it, and I'm like, okay, I'd probably play like, you know, I'd probably play like five, four different regions. You, you play it, and it's like seven different regions or eight. It is so easy to get all kinds of regions. You have tons of two ofs in this deck. And you have cards that generate new cards, and like even Mariah Warden, a Bilgewater card, because I'm like a sparring student from Ionia, and it just, this is a very reliable win con you can get by turn 7 or 8. And alright, that's the deck. Let's get into some games for you guys. Alright, it's a mirror match. This is a different version of Banal Tree. Let's see how we do. Mayor is really strong in the mirror match. Whoever has Mayor can start flooding the board in all kinds of crazy ways, so we're gonna keep the Mayor for sure. Mariah Warden's great. Um, in average, I'd say that this version with the Bilgewater should be slightly quicker at playing the Bale Tree. This one has Scorched Earth, which can remove our Bale Tree. So it can go both ways. Overall, like our hand, I'd say it's pretty good. So I'm excited to see how this matchup uh, turns out. The Chief and Bale Tree is going to head-head. Usually these games are pretty crazy. 
a lot of uh, generated cards, and when you have Loping Telescope involved as well, then there's like random epic cards with only in main deck, and it gets pretty insane. I think we can be the ones exerting the pressure here because Mariah Warden gives us two units for one. If he doesn't draw House Spiders to block, this is great. He might just have like group shot and just waiting for us to attack, but that's fine. Okay, Mariah Warden, see what we get. Another elusive, that's good, but it's a PNZ. We already have PNZ. So right now we're only PNZ Bilgewater. But we are threatening. <laughs> we are threatening some form of pressure here. That's nice. Definitely down to trade these two. So he'll probably block here. No group shot. So we're chipping in for two. Elusive damage plus puff caps. Team will level sometimes. In these decks. One thing I am afraid of though is Banal Commando. Um, it has more health than these. And it's good. Okay, yeah, so both have Mayor. We have pretty intense match. Mayor is really powerful. If one person has Mayor, the other one doesn't, it's pretty hard to come back. Alright, we're going to get Telescope. Because that makes it so Mayor, a card that generates a card, gives you another card, and we're just able to just keep getting more value. Moon Silver. Ooh. Okay, so he he has Telescope as well. Um I don't want to fall too behind on damage, so I don't mind blocking this. Taking this is an elusive chip for one, but we'd be taking two, and I think it's worth it just to go ahead. Um we play the telescope, it actually enables the tenor of terror's ability to um To summon a, the what's it called? Facet Burden. All you have to do is play a created card or kill an enemy with a spell. So the created card is Loki Telescope. So here between Bomber Twins, this is Sharima, this is Demacia. This can give us another card, which is interesting. I think we're gonna get this. The Challenger can actually be good at removing the Mayor. It will take some time, but um, Mayor does just keep getting value with over and over again if we don't kill him. We can even Buster Shot him too. But I think I like having answers to multiple Mayors as well. We're gonna play the Tenor of Terror here. This is actually insane for leveling Tristana. Because Tristana levels when you play, um, it's not Tristana. <laughs> I mix them up sometimes. She levels when you play, you summon four plus multi-region allies. This is two, it's one that summons another. Uh, how do we attack here? Definitely with this, no questions. I think the impact damage is good here as well. I think it was to clear his whole field. Like, he can block this. These, like, these are good defensive blocks for him, but in case he has Poppy, I think I'm down to just limit his field. We could Buster Shot Poppy too, but I'm down for these trades. I think overall, I like this. His Poppy's worse. Maybe I can just Buster Shot the Mayor. Get ahead on board through that. Mini War's not very good, as I was saying. Mini War's pretty bad in this near match. It's like one of the worst cards. Doesn't really do anything, so having his in hand is not the hand you want for the mirror, but we'll see what we can do. Hoping to draw a balance tree before him would be nice. Just get a pump. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. <laughs> Definitely gonna get rid of that. But even a die is still good for him. He gets a Demacia name. I might just kill Mayor. Should I have done it all in the stack? I'm not sure if I want to kill Mayor. I'm kind of trying to get like the the value with these cards, but I'm not like finding it. Is this value? I, even value? I guess we can just challenge the Mayor with our Swiftling Flight. Drawing cards would be great here because our mini morphs are breaking our hand up. This is good. We can go wide with that. Definitely not losing Mayor here, so we'll have to take that one. We're slightly ahead in terms of life. That's good. It might come down to who draws a uh, Vandal Tree first, though, and right now we don't have that, so it's kind of scary. So, Bilgewater getting Bilgewater. We already have that, but that's fine. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, yeah. this is great. Getting rid of him anymore. I love that. Alright, we'll play Swiftling. I think Swiftling Vanguard, or Swiftling Vanguard, would be good here. There's tons of things that have uh, 2 health we can just chip away with. Yeah, again, I'm pretty scared, though, of his Bandle Tree. Maybe if he plays Bandle Tree, we can take that time to get a huge board and go for damage. I do like how Loop's Traveler got rid of one of them anymore, because they are very dead in this matchup, but amazing in others. He might level. I I'm assuming he can kill this. I'm assuming he can kill it. He'll probably kill it right now. Ooh, not afraid of Teemo, eh? All right, on the chain, or on the stack. Whatever you want to call it. We'll kill the mayor here. 
doing it now makes it harder for him to eliminate our unit. Like, good counterplay to group shot is if I let it go and I only have four, I would group shot Mayor and he could, like, pokey stick this, and then we'd only have three and Mayor would live. We definitely don't want that. I think going wide is actually like, pretty good. If he wants to not block these, that's fine too. We'll attack like this, this has uh, the one health left over compared to having two if he blocked one of these. Alright, level Teemo. Right. Hasn't drawn any puff caps yet, but I mean... Hey, if he doesn't deal with this, it's gonna keep happening. They get pretty scary. Okay. That can block Teemo. But we can actually hook that away. Which is cool. Lemurai Warden. These will give us some pretty cool card generation. Bandle Tree I'm still a bit afraid of, but again, if he plays it here... It's not the end of the world. Ooh, that's scary. Get a blocker. That's our Ionia card. I don't want to have Teemo damage. I think we're actually going to do a lot of damage with Teemo. Um, maybe I just play this. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Ooh, get the puff cap in. You already used some buzzer shots. Okay, in one action, this gives us two attackers. And they have impact. Get rid of many more if we don't care about this matchup. Get rid of the elusive blocker for Teemo. I think we're just the first at a full push here. As much damage as we can get, I do think we should milk the fact that we're ahead on board. Especially with a level Teemo going in. That's two damage plus doubles his puff caps. Nice, nice. Ship two damage here, the impact damage here. Yeah, this deck could win in so many different ways, dude. And we're not we're never running out of steam. Like Mayor gives us a card, into telescope gives us a card, it's just like so many free cards. We're gonna go for impact. We're gonna go for that impact win con, impact puff caps, chip him away. That sounds good to me. Wow. And I mean, wow. That could be big. I don't think we're gonna go for that, but it'd be hilarious if we did. I guess we'll play this for zero while we have a chance. He's, he's definitely gonna attack with the Poro Sled. Or I think he will. We can just block, and then we can go ahead and play a ton of terror for impact. We're at 8 out of 10. Oof. This game is really going well for us, huh? Another telescope. Getting a bone skewer. I'm gonna get bone skewer. <laughs> I'll never see bone skewer coming. That's so random. Now the question here is, do I play the bandle tree? I, I think we do. We, there's no reason really not to. We just have so many different win cons here. We might as well just keep them up. If he draws any puff caps too, we have like the impact. Alright, yeah, we're at 17, at 5. Even though we're getting rid of a blocker, I don't think he'll be able to push the damage he wants to. So this should be great. Okay, so he's at 7, so we're still slightly ahead. I think he'll attack to try and get something for this, I guess not. Oh, wow. Man, we have a lot of plays this turn. Wait, we needed that, right? Oh, we already have this to be out of here. Okay. Um... Doubt he has answers for Teemo, maybe many more. This should slow him down a little bit. And it says Overwhelm, which is huge. So we have Overwhelm, we have Elusive, we have Puff Caps, we have Impact. You have a Bone Skewer, I guess for good measure. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet deck. He's all of low health too, so this Overwhelm should be quite potent. <laughs> He hasn't even drawn the puff caps yet, dude. But I guess time's whittling away, really. Don't have any turns left. Oh god, what is this? A Poro sled? Okay. Um. Yeah. Gonna try and get that impact damage in. I was gonna say, does he even have an answer for this? I guess with Bone Skewer. Ooh. Why? Well, I definitely wanna kill that. I think I'm, I'm not throwing. I'm kind of overextending a little bit, though. I guess the overall doesn't matter anymore because he played a 5-5 blocker. We can just get rid of that so Teemo can strike. Oh, wow. We played right in the block, huh? I think it was the right play, though, still. All right, we're gonna get the impact damage in. He can just block Teemo, so we should just hold him back. Get the impact damage in. So all you do is draw two puff caps and we win. On top of that, um, we pretty much guaranteed win because we're gonna finish down tree before him. And if we both have down tree completed, 
at the whoever's becomes the attacker wins. So what what I mean by that is here I'll show you next turn it's easier. What I mean by that is we both have Battle Tree completed and he ends his turn, we become the attacker. So our round start effects go first and we win. So yeah, we pretty much win on all bases. Battle Tree, damage, uh, puff caps, and GG's. Yeah, GG's. <laughs> oh, good games. All right, our plan is Darkness, one of the new decks of the expansion. Uh, pretty hype, has two new champions in it. Let's see what we can do here. So in this hand, we definitely want to go for a Bandle Tree win con because this deck has very limited ways to deal with Bandle Tree. They have to tech Crumble or Yordle Contraption to kill a landmark. But going second, I think we threaten him with the beatdown strat from Poppy. Then he'll be busy dealing with our beatdown, you know, so he can die. And then right when he's finally stabilizing and not uh, dying from the, you know, poppy attacks, then we're able to finish him off with the Bandle Tree. This deck's nice because they can win two different ways. It's not all in Bandle Tree, right? If you have Poppy and you have a lot of ways to Swarm, then it's not too hard to threaten them to die before the Bandle Tree even comes out. So very good hand. I think it's a pretty good matchup overall as well. So play Mariah Ward in here. Nice. <laughs> so we have a Bilgewater unit and a... Targon unit. Yeah, keep these in mind when we're thinking about um, when we're thinking about our balance tree. So this goes to the deck. We draw one, draw many morph. Good versus a level Vigar. We already won two in this matchup, but let's get out of the way with the flight. This is here. We want to keep it to block with the Catalyzer. So whenever it strikes, it grants its darkness everywhere extra damage. So you only want to let it strike once. This is like the max. So you made us lose two attack. Funny enough, I think we still actually play this right here. So we played Targon, we played Noxus, we played Build Water. Alright, probably get pranked again. Let's see what happens here. I don't mind if he hits a mini more because we have two. Another prank by a triple auto boost. Interesting. Alright, so many pranks he does here. None. None. We have the Bandle Tree. If he hits this, it will raise in cost, which kind of sucks. But we can't play it this turn, so. We're gonna go ahead and just play Poppy. Oh no, don't hit Bell Tree. Okay, Bell Tree saved this one time, but he has another. Gotta be careful. And he made the flight vulnerable and have minus one. We can just attack with this and shuffle it. So, pretty good so far. Again, you see how fast this is? It's so fast. We're already at 5 out of 10. This hand's very average, right? We don't even have May or anything. A lot of games you get like Mayor, into Telescope, get all kinds of free cards, and you're just like cruising. You're just at like 6 or 7 by like turn around now, right? So 5 out of 10 is pretty good pace. Hope to dodge uh, again with the Bandle Tree, and we did. Nice. Raising this cost would be kind of annoying. I guess raising cost would also be kind of annoying. Yeah, either one. The raising the cost is the best thing in my opinion. Get off pranks, so anything can raise the cost definitely sets me back. All right, so we have our Shreema Ugent. I say Ugent. Shreema Unit. Very good. Usually I want to play all the units in the deck uh, for the different regions before I play Battle Tree to take it out of the pool, right? If I play this first, it could give me a Shreema Unit and then I already have one, right? So I definitely want to play my Shreema Units before um, before I play the Battle Tree. This is actually a good landmark to get off Bomber Twins. It gives you a random landmark that costs two or less. This is great because then I can kind of predict for what I need next. That's fine. Again, he shouldn't have answers for Bandle Tree. Like a standard build won't. So here we'll just play this. Try and get something new. So we haven't got Shadow Owls yet. We've already got Targon. Um, what's next turn? Turn seven. We could play Bandle Commando and Bandle Tree. They'll probably just kill this, though, with uh, a Darkness. So I guess we'll just play it safe and get a Shadow Wild unit. Okay. Fine by us. Um, he doesn't really have Reach. We can just take that. His only Reach is Vigar, but I don't think that Vigar is going to make it to two any more hand. Right when it levels to hit the next extra with Darkness, we'll just use the new Morph on it. So again, I like to play this first, just to take it out of the pool. So we're at 7 out of 10. Pretty good. Hopefully this will draw us a card. We might just kill it here, though. Okay, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Darkness. Okay, and Pokestick. Fair enough. It's 
fine by me. So I think now that we're so close to the downstream wind con, we're just gonna kinda go into a defensive state, right? We just start blocking everything, don't take any more damage if you don't have to, and then Dental Tree should clean up the game in the next few turns. Again, unless they go out of their way to main deck letter mark removal, which most don't, we should just be fine here. These aren't really threats. We could actually buster shot this in attack, but there's not really a point because we're not going for the aggressive wind con here. We're just going uh, gonna stall with the bandle tree and be fine there. Alright. So we need Freyord, Ionia. It's always so hard to figure out. Freyord, Ionia, and PNZ. Freyord, Ionia, and PNZ. Yeah, we're definitely gonna block this. We're gonna block both, actually. Again, just take as little damage as possible. Really just try and stay alive. His only reach is a level of Vigar, and then right when he plays that, we'll just maybe morph it. Also, they could play Ixtali Sentinel to hit us directly, but without the level of Vigar, it shouldn't be too bad. Alright, fine by me. No biggie here. Gonna lose some mana. I could use this, but I think I'd rather just save it. Maybe I should have used this on the Twisted Catalyzer. We just had so many blockers that I thought we didn't really need it. We're getting a bit low. This is really good. One mana PNZ rep. I guess we can actually keep this in case we um, need like another one if he does main deck landmark removal. I like Buster Shot, but I think all we're caring about right now is Mini Morph for the Vigar, so we'll, we'll just play it safe. Keep these in case it's like double Vigar. This is the card I was talking about. This can actually do Nexus damage. Uh, when it's played, the next Dark Tree she plays this round actually hits the Nexus too. So we're only taking four, not really a big deal. So keep playing more blockers. Again, very uh, nice. We got the one mana PNZ rep here that allows us to still play the rest of the cards in our hand. And I'm still going to save this for the Vigar. That's really the only threat here. Also, mini morphing this, I don't believe stops this from being able to hit the Nexus. I think once you played it, the rest of the turn. Um, it's just able to do that. Make the darkness your own. All right, my Pachi's a blocker too. We're eight out of ten, right? We really should be fine to win here. Not gonna attack. No reason to give me like cheeky combat tricks or something he can do. Like maybe he wants us to attack, right? Um, so here's our Ionia card. We actually have Ionia and Noxus or and Freyord. The thing is, this has to attack, and I doubt it's going to go through. So we'll just play the Freyord card. I mean, the only thing left is Ionia, and we'll win next turn. All right, this is very good for us. We just, you know, just block. Nothing special here. It was Poppy, no big deal. All we have to do now is just play this. Main Morph of Vigar, and GG. This is usually how the deck wins, right? You just have so many units, you're able to just stall, and then the down tree will be... Filling up over time, because you're playing somebody from Ultra Region followers. A bit scary, he has another way to do this, but at the same time, um, you know, we're, we're pretty much good, so... I guess we can just play this. We can also use Pass. I guess Pass is probably best, just to force him into using the Darkness on this, but it doesn't really matter. I think we're actually going to Poke Stick and draw, considering I don't want to lose all of our mana, and he can't play Vigar anymore. So there's not really a threat. We kind of lost the threat. The only threat is level Vigar, which lets him use Darkness on us directly, but not look like he can do that. Alright, we'll pass here. So next turn, all we have to do is if he plays Vigar, we instantly mini morph it. And then we just play the droplet and we win. Pretty good. Alright, droplet here, 10 out of 10. There should be a Phantom Tree win con. We have the answer for Vigar. This is why I run three. It's make or break, right? Like imagine we ran two. We didn't, I mean we have two here, but imagine we didn't draw it like at all. I'd rather run two than or have two in hand than none. If you have none, we could actually lose this game. But with the mini morph, there's no chance. They don't run burn outside of uh, the little Vigar. All right, fine by us. We just end the turn. We win. If he even has landmark removal, if he runs the crumble or your contraption, some people do tech uh, for the matchup against Battle Tree, just to kill the landmark. But we have another one, so we're good to go. Pretty much have all bases covered here. So, should be a GG. Okay, okay. Alright, alright, right. I see you, I see you. Got some spunk, doesn't want to give it up yet. I see you. So we'll end our turn again. The second this turn ends, we win the game. Alright, alright. 
Okay, pokey stick, all right. I mean, even if he draws Viagra at this point, he can't even afford um, the darkness to finish us off, so. Good to go. All right, and the turn. <laughs> so now, okay, GG. We get the nice little animation. The down tree comes up. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, he gets. All right, we're playing against Zareth Zillion. This deck is really, really good against the R. It has tons of landmark removal, has three Desert Naturalists, which can kill any landmark in the game. That's on the field. So we're going to have to win through Smork Win Con. This would be a good game to show how you don't just need to rely on Balance Tree. It's not all in Balance Tree. You can also win pretty pretty well just by um, impacting tons of damage to them with the impact keyword and going wide so they can't block everything. So we'll mulligan this for a one drop would be nice. The pressure going, that's fine too. I mean, we make the mana here, we have a spell. This can get rid of their Inventive Chemist if they play that, so uh, the board isn't as big. We can chip in some damage. So, Mariah Warden, a great start already. Bilgewater card, give us another attacker, and we have Ionia and Bilgewater in case we have multiple Bamboo Trees. So if they kill one, we have another one. Okay, unfortunately, we got this card, which can't attack. But it's fine, because if this goes through, we're able to use Pixie support ability to buff Mariah Warden and push her some solid damage. So already at the bat, we have four damage in. Pretty good, because Poppy's gonna be scary. Once we get Poppy out, that's a lot of damage, especially with another Mariah Warden. We can buff our whole field plus one plus one. Okay, he's in deep thought. I don't think he can really do anything here. So this is interesting, to say the least. No way, dude. Just group shot. I'm sure you have more rock hoppers where that came from. Okay, nice. All right, here we're gonna play. Okay, so nice. So in case he has desert naturalist to kill our battle tree, we have another one. But we're gonna go ahead and play a second Mariah Warden. Pretty good. Now we have a Shrima, Ionia, and Bilgewater. And the more units we have, the bigger buff uh, value of the Poppy, buffing all of our field plus one plus one machine attack. Okay. Time Bomb would actually be good against us, because we do have the Rye Warren's only one health. The thing is, if we can buff them even once to get out of Time Bomb range, and I like that a lot. Trade here, that's fine. I guess I'm afraid of Rite of Arcane. That can kill Poppy pretty outright. So we're gonna have five regions on turn four. That's pretty good. Um, let's really hope he doesn't have Rite of Arcane. No Rite of Arcane. Um, here, I honestly would just buff Poppy. This is interesting, actually. Yeah, I guess I guess we just buff Poppy. Keep her health high. I mean, he has to block her. He's gonna take too much damage. So he can block her, and then we'll also still have some health left over, which is nice. Okay. Not blocking, taking seven to the face. Jeez. Yeah, in this matchup, like he has answers to the boundary, right? He really needs to focus on not taking too much damage. His block isn't bad by him because he does keep you know a lot of units, and it seems he has even more. Now he's not behind on board, but he's definitely behind on health here. And that can make a big difference. So 5 out of 10. As much as I want to play this, I think if we just play Mariah Warden into Arena Kingpin, they'll fit our curve the best they can. So 6 out of 10 here. We did play Shadow All unit. This is Noctis. Being a 7. Wow, dodge both of those. It's probably going to be like Kingpin, right? Okay, we're still playing the Kingpin because it fits our curve. Um, Poppy will be doing huge work here. Buffing these extremely wide boards to show this deck isn't a one trick and it can win and marry different ways. It's kind of a, uh, I guess, a staple of very good decks in Runeterra is they're not too linear. They're able to win through multiple different hand states. So this is just showing. Even against landmark removal decks, we're still in a fine spot. Um, yeah, this seems fun. Play the Kingpin. So we do the open attack. We have tons of damage. 7 out of 10, and if he removes one, we have another. Interesting. Alright, we have to get an open attack here. Try and get as much value out of Poppy as we can. Especially if he, like, drew Red of Arcane and steals 4 to a unit. If I develop something, then he could just kill the Poppy. And that would uh, really set us back. Alright, looks like lethal to me. And even, even if not, I mean, we're, we're chilling. Okay, many more. Alright, good counterplay, but honestly... Still in a really good spot here. We're gonna flip okay to let the attack go through. He has no healing. So Pokey Stick to finish the game here. We have Pokey Stick to finish the game. 
We have 10 repair impact to finish the game. We have double battle tree to finish the game. So this deck is just really hard to deal with. Because I'm saying, like, they have to deal with all these units coming and coming and coming at them. And then, even if they do, it's like, okay, battle tree. So it's just, it's so much going on at once. Alright guys, that's the Bandle Tree deck. Pretty crazy, right? All kinds of crazy scenarios. Went through Bandle Tree, went through tons of damage, it has so much refuel. Very, very good deck right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to um, turn on notifications, subscribe if you enjoyed it. I will have daily deck guides, I have top and best decks for ranked, I have champion tier list, stuff like that. I also stream on Twitch, 6.30pm EST, uh, every day if you want to watch me play live. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.